Welcome, friends, to the How To Heretic. I'm Uncle Mark. And I'm Uncle Dan. And I'm Uncle Doug. And this is your user's guide to life on the outside. That's right. Leaving religion is the first step into a larger, better world. But it can also be a scary world. Things work differently now. Never fear. That's why we're here. We are the uncles. And with help from good friends and experts in all sorts of fields, we're going to share the stories and seek the knowledge to build a great life. After all, you only get one that we know of, so you'd better make the most of it. (laughs) Gentle uncles, here we are. Yes, don't all speak at once. Here here we are. It's too late. Uh, We are transcontinental, binational... All the things. Yes, indeed. Uh, Dan, you are back from uh, an extended sea voyage. Yes, I was a, I was a, mari- a mariner. Yes, you were, a, you were a, a stevedore on the poop deck. I think you were a seaman. Yes. <laughs> I, might, were, I might have been. You were a seaman, and so uh, we're glad you made it around the Cape of Good Hope. Um, <clears throat> but here we are, episode 85. Woo. It's a miracle we've made it this far. Uh, yeah. And so we hope to continue. And I think uh, you guys, uh, I, I was a little behind the, the thing this week. So you guys have prepared the segments. Yeah, I, I'm going to start us off by talking about something really stupid that some early Mormons did. We like to talk about a lot it's, of stupid it, stuff. It's a deep I, well. Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to talk about some stupid stuff that somebody did and nobody knows who. And yeah. then since I'm the only one who works around here, I'm also <laughs> going to talk about some stupid shit. Somebody said in the Bible. Yay. Rude. So, yeah, we've got a lot of uh, good show coming up. Let's bite into it. So stick around. Don't be shy. Uh, no questions will be asked and none will be answered. So let's move on. <laughs> uh, hey, Uncle Mark. Uh, yeah. Hey, what's up? Y- have you ever had the impulse as yes. you were, you know, have you ever Oh, looked- you to be more specific. Yes, you've had some impulses. I know yes. that. You have impulse control problems. But have you ever had the impulse when you're like reading a thing to go, ah, this is too easy? Uh, reading, never. <laughs> this is just uh, <laughs> never ever. This makes too much sense. <laughs> Let's, is there a way we can make this harder and for no reason? Is there a way in attempting to make this easier we can make it impossibly <laughs> insane? <laughs> well, well, I think Uncle Doug can step in and, and, and clue, help us out with this. Doug, I, do, you, I, do you have a, a cure for what doesn't ail us? I indeed do. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about something Mormon. Yay! Yay! Finally. Um, as we have covered many times on this show, yes. Mormons believe that they are a kingdom unto themselves. This was never truer than in that brief period of time when they were quite literally a kingdom unto themselves. Yes. Uh, in, the, in the very brief period of time <clears throat> between the Mormons settling the Salt Lake Valley in July of 1847, which at the time belonged to Mexico, and, and the treaty... Well, let's, it, it belonged to some Utes and Goshutes, but that's, I guess, well, neither here nor, let's nor not there. not quibble but... over who killed who. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and then uh, between the settling of Salt Lake Valley... <clears throat> Excuse me, and the uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. Sure, a mere seven months later, <laughs> which Aww. ended the Mexican Mexican American War and ceded what would become Utah to the United States, which the Mormons had just crossed the Great Plains to get away from. Right. Yeah, and then yeah, they left the U.S. and then the U.S. attacked and uh, uh, took uh, them over. The U.S. lapped them, yeah. and then and then Plymouth Rock landed the fuck back on them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, what was that time spent? It was literally like two years, wasn't it? No. It, oh, it well, between the, the... Less than a year. Yeah, between the, them settling in 1847 and the Treaty of Hidalgo, it was seven months. Oh, my God. But it, it, took, it took years for anything to really come of that, but right. on paper, it's laughable. That so, is pretty hilarious. <clears throat> further complicating the vision of an inland sovereign kingdom, gold was discovered in California. Gold! <laughs> <laughs> Causing the calif- <laughs> Sorry, it's just my natural it's, instincts. Again. Was that you or was that Methuselah at the uh, Creation <laughs> Museum? That was Methuselah. Hard to tell. <laughs> um, the, this caused the California Gold Rush of 1849, drawing over 300,000 people to California, Jesus. many of whom would travel right through what Brigham Young had dubbed the State of Deseret. Mm. Uh, by the way, the word Deseret being derived from the Book of Mormon meaning honeybee, yes. in what was purported to be the uncorrupted pre-tower of Babel langu- uh, language. By the way, did, did, you say, did you say Book of Mormon, like Kermit the Frog? <laughs> Mormon. <laughs> just, you just went, the Book of Mormon. 
Why are there so many? Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Let's please right. get back on track. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> so you may ask yourself, why was an untranslated word in the, in the translated Book of Mormon, along with its translated definition? The answer, of course, is... <laughs> Go, it was it was because it was in a lion. There were bees in the lion. <laughs> that's right. And that's a lion bee is called a deseret. It's just a lion maths. bee or a lion bee. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is incidentally why the state symbol of Utah is a beehive. It is indeed. So yeah. the ambition of the dream of an independent inland empire was matched only by the speed with which it disappeared. However, in that brief period. Oh, the hubristic dreams of those early Mormons. Oh, yes. And although early Mormon leaders very quickly realized that westward expansion would eventually overtake them, for several years they implemented a veritable cornucopia of economic, social, educational, and urban planning initiatives. They otherwise had their known, own militia. Otherwise known as flops. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A whole bunch of bad ideas. The only thing they have in common is that they all failed. Well, uh, they had their not, own... Not the... Not the uh, listen... Not Salt Lake's <laughs> grid road system. That oh god, that actually works. That I, well, I like the grid system. It's just that we have the largest city blocks on the planet, that's right. and there's just no point to it, and it's terrible. But other than that, yeah, we got a good grid. Thanks for the grid, Brigham. <laughs> so uh, the more the early Mormons had their own militia, currency, banking system, and of course their own views on marriage, which make their current views on marriage not just bigoted but hypocritical to boot. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those insane, hubristic, and ultimately doomed ideas that I would like to talk about today. Today, we will be discussing the Deseret Alphabet. Yes. Yay! Uh, this is one of those things that Mormons know a little bit about, ex-Mormons know a lot about, yeah. <laughs> and non-Mormons have never heard of. Never right. heard of, yeah. Now, uh, mind you, I, mo I would venture to say most Mormons have never heard of this. Uh, probably. Most practicing Mormons have no idea about this. Yeah, and, and the ones that do probably are listening to this show. <laughs> right. <laughs> so the Deseret Alphabet was started right after the Mormons settled in Salt Lake in 1847, and it continued until its completion, or at least the first version of its completion in 1854. Although several prominent early Mormons were involved in its creation, it largely was attributed to our dear brother Brigham. Uh, it's what's called a phonemic English language spelling reform. Basically, it was an attempt by Brigham and his posse to make English easier to learn for children <laughs> and non-English speakers, which the Mormons expected would start flooding in from Europe to the east and Indian country to the west. Mm. Yeah, which which uh, they had a lot of Europeans coming yes, in they to, did. to join the Mormons. Yep. So it was reasonable to, to expect that. What, what, what isn't reasonable is for a bunch of non-linguistic hey, totally. people to think that they can come up with a new version of how language works exactly well, again once, uh, the, once you think that you're actually a prophet of god <laughs> you, you have a slightly inflated sense of your capabilities right, right? Hey, why can't you do everything exactly. i don't know well and of, of the many stupid things that brigham young did in his life this was one of them <laughs> um, it at least wasn't nefariously backed it wasn't like it was an actual attempt to solve a real world problem, yeah. right? It, it was um, not. It was not motivated by evil, which literally might be the only thing he ever did. That's right. right. That wasn't well, motivated the, by evil. And, <laughs> and you know, let's be honest. English as a That's spoken right. and written language is a fucking mess. It's a disaster. Yeah. If you the sentence structure is confusing, the tenses are confusing. Spelling is a nightmare. Yeah. For example, for uh, through bow and rough. All end in O-U-G-H. Right. But don't sound remotely the same. Right. Pluralization is a mess. Yeah. One goose, two geese. Yeah. One moose, two mooses. Uh, or one mouse, two mice. One right. house, two houses. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Right. So. Yeah. I, I pity anyone who learned English as a second language. Like English, English is nightmare. correct as the first language. Because, like, you know, you're young and you don't know any better and you have to learn it. But, like, yeah, yeah once, it, once it, none of it makes any sense. Well, if it wasn't for spell check, I think we would all be living in the jungle at this right? point. Right. Comb, yeah. bomb, and tomb. They <laughs> exactly. All, come on. Exactly. So the, another reason is, is said to be the desire to, co to code Mormon literature and correspondence to make it harder for outsiders to understand. Oh, well, there may have been that. There may have been that. After all, war with the U.S. was a real possibility at the time. Uh, and, and while this may have been the case, it would have only fooled the laziest and most unconcerned outsider, as although it's not a one-to-one -one replacement of the Latin alphabet, it's pretty close. Okay. The Zodiac cipher this was not. Right. So, um, 
The alphabet originally consisted of 38 letters, which would kind of morph into 40. Really? Yeah. Wow. Why that's, do you need more letters? Simpler. Well, because <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something. I have studied phonetics uh-huh. because I, you know, in my actor training, I had to I had to learn the international phonetic alphabet. And English need you don't need. I mean, you you need, ah, never mind. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> well, so each letter is assigned a syllabic value, and when written down alone, it has that value as its name. And that name sometimes is a small world word like the. Oh, the it, it's the name of this letter is the. Okay. And but when it's in in a word, it loses that value and becomes part of word. Like W doesn't you know when you see W in a word, right? It's w instead right. of W, obviously, right. right? Yeah, yeah. Um. So for example, Wu Yi Ha P Gi etc. And oh. Uncle Mark would definitely want me to mention that the sound for gay yes. looks like an ass with Hitler's haircut. <laughs> it's it's true a, a, and a circumcised penis no it looks it, well to it, me it looks what? like a buttock with it kind does. of a swooping <laughs> hitlerian haircut it really does and it's and the, it's <laughs> the only the it's the only deseret alphabet sound i know and i i'm i'm taking it to my grave motherfuckers i i so so they weren't going for just a single sound like a single unit sound right like t or p right or, or e it was or more expansive than that I, yeah it was the we who oh wha. so it was oh my so you'd need I mean to properly do that you would need hundreds of combinations well that's the I yes technically but this was so they were trying to to do many things but they're at idiots once. so of course they only needed forty of course right so anyway uh, upon its completion and attempted dissemination Brigham in his typical humble way said quote the advantages of this alphabet will soon be realized especially by foreigners it will also be very advantageous to our children. It will be the means of introducing uniformity to our orthography, and the years that are now required to learn to read and to spell can be devoted to other studies. Oh, Right on, Brigham. So uh, church leaders tried hard to get this alphabet into circulation, but it had its problems. Firstly, nobody cared. Secondly, (laughs) many early Mormons were barely literate in English. Asking them to learn was primarily a structural meditation on English sentence construction, spelling, and tense makeup was asking a bit much, and also it was stupid. Um, (laughs) It was meant to solve several problems at once. It tried to eliminate the many spelling and tense complexities of the English language. Uh, It was devoid of, this is crazy, avoid of ascenders and descenders, which are the little squiggly parts of lowercase letters uh, that extend up and down. Think of a lowercase b or a g, which was supposed to save money in the printing of (laughs) materials. Wait, uh, and it was what? supposed to extend the because it, it would extend the life of metal typeface. Wait, so, wait, wait. W- so there's no upper and lower tense. There, there's no upper and lower cases. The, what, oh, the cases, upper yeah, case, yeah. the upper case of any um, character in the uh, Deseret Alphabet is just bigger. It's just a bigger version. <laughs> it's just a bigger <laughs> version of it. Oh my and which by the, so dumb. by the way, I just I just pulled up a, an image of the Deseret Alphabet. Yeah, and I would encourage the listeners to do so. There are many, and uh, and N. Is sort of this backwards lightning shaped N. Yeah. Uh, but you put two of them together and it looks very much like the Nazi SS the, uh, on, the, oh. on the uniforms and stuff. That's kind of well, spooky. Well, that it's nothing a- if not a Rorschach test for whatever sick shit is going on in somebody's head. I mean, that's obviously exactly. the case, right? Well, that's true. Because when yeah, I looked at that, when I looked at your gay symbol, all I saw was like elephants facing away from me. It also is a big elephant. Yes. So. Uh, For an alphabet that was made up by a group of guys in a room, one glaring fuck-up was the fact that they didn't include a symbol for for the schwa. Oh, yeah. And I would like to explain how big a mistake that was, but I have never fully understood the schwa, except (laughs) that my teachers talked about it a lot in elementary school. Schwa is just uh. It's a uh, uh, uh. It's just uh. So so it's like, like if you say, if you say the animal, then you've got an E at the end of the, but if you say the mountain... The uh in the is a schwa. There you go. You got that, everybody? Everybody, uh, everybody on, on board? Schwa's. There will be a test. <laughs> yeah. schwa. Schwa this has takes. been schwa talk. So <laughs> <laughs> there was a cursive and block version gonna, of this I'm alphabet. I'm going to Google that fucking thing. I'm going to see if there's schwa talk. I'll bet there's schwa a podcast. Talk. Okay. It'll, It'll be our new one. Talk. Uh, there was a cursive and block version of this alphabet. Cursive being helpful when you're using a fountain pen. Not to have to lift it off the paper. Right. And when you were in a hurry because you were dying of scurvy. <laughs> the block letters were meant for the printing press. Right. The church did spend some money on typeface, but the alphabet kept changing. 
<laughs> and it was estimated that it would cost millions of dollars to reprint all church literature and educational materials. That is probably the biggest reason for its failure. Also, it was stupid. Also, so, yeah. <laughs> so, some devout, devout Mormons gave it a go. Some learned the alphabet uh, enough to write their journals and correspondences in it. Some shopkeepers repainted their signs in it. Oh, wow. And a few fanatics even translated the scriptures and other books into it. Oh, yeah. uh, it was even taught at some schools, but mo- mostly it was a huge and obvious flop. Um, yeah. It died fully with Brigham Young when he died in 1877, but it had long since been practically abandoned. So, Except it hadn't been... Uh, I mean, it had been... Printed onto the, it had been stamped onto the money that they printed. Yeah, it was on currency. Yeah. They tried. They gave it a shot. Well, and and I guess I just gave away the game that the Mormons also printed and coin like stamped their own coins. That's right. Of money. That's right. They had yeah. their own thing. Um, um, which, but, which, by the way, shout out to Tucker who, uh, yes, who, who 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 gave us some replicas of those. We have coins. some replicas of that. Their money. Yeah, and it actually uh, explained a lot of those. The the uh, the utter thievery of Brigham Young personally and the church yeah. institutionally in taking people's gold and issuing basically gold! worthless gold <laughs> issuing basically worthless money to them right yeah yeah it's worthless scripts like irregularly uh, cut out like, right yeah just just a scrap of paper that says this guy gave me $25 yeah exactly <laughs> but you know a scrap if you, of paper you would tie to a raven in Game of Thrones <laughs> <laughs> if, or a seagull in Game of Brigham <laughs> but if if you're interested in the Deseret Alphabet and you go to and you you know one strange afternoon go up to the daughters of the utah pioneers museum on uh, at the top of main street in salt lake city yeah and they have they have a book of mormon that was entirely printed in the oh. deseret alphabet can you imagine the labor it's, of love that it was uh, yeah <laughs> it's bad that, enough written in its faux 17th century english yeah. oh my god now i've got to read it in the deseret alphabet <laughs> yeah so for former Mormons, the Deseret Alphabet is one of those things that is a source of hilarity, derision, and for some reason, a modicum of pride. I don't know. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, it's, it's not exotic. Most of the letters look like symbols from higher math or the Cyrillic alphabet, yeah. but most of us know it when we see it. Yeah. Yeah. And you generally see it in ex-Mormon websites or literature and on the occasional tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I know. I have a friend who has a, a, yeah. a, a, a tattoo with it on. And, you know, Mormons don't really have an issue talking about it, but they don't catch them bringing it up very often. However, former Mormons fucking love it, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. And it's the Mormons don't they don't ever like to talk about, you know, stuff we'll talk about another time, like the United Order and and the Desert Alphabet, um, because they don't like to talk about the failures. Right, right, but right. but to me, it's part and parcel with so many nineteenth-century utopian ideas. Right? Yeah, Mormonism was just one of a baker's dozen of these kind of sects that that exploded in the early and mid nineteenth century, and they all were about you know they all had these crazy ideas about the perfect society, and so creating your own alphabet is absolutely you know on point. It, it was a and time of ideas, that. you know, yeah. it was, yeah. Well, and not only that, it was a time, it was, yes, a time of ideas, but also a time of, uh, of trying to separate themselves. They were, yeah. they were yeah. trying to create a kingdom. They were trying to create their own universe. That's right. And, uh, and, you know, eventually. And Mar- for Marvel seven and months, DC they succeeded. Out, but, yeah. For but seven yeah. glorious months. <laughs> um, <laughs> There are plenty of uh, Deseret Alphabet, Alphabet translators online, and listeners should go and give it a shot. I can guarantee you minutes of fun. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> Uncle Doug, or you, you, you sent, us, uh, sent me and Mark a, uh, a, a text. In that it, alphabet. In that alphabet, which, A, I didn't even know you could do. Yeah. Because yeah. you didn't send an image. You no. sent it. Apparently, the phones understand this alphabet. I copied and pasted. Don't know how that works, yeah. but I looked down at it, and I was like... Am I having a stroke? I, did, I can't read this. It looks a little like Korean, but I know it's not. And a little like Cyrillic, but I know it's not. Right. Well, and that's exactly re- that's a great description. <clears throat> you should have read it with your spirit eyes. <laughs> that, and that's the key. So yeah. on a very bizarre side note, the Deseret Alphabet was adopted for a time 
by the micronation of Molossia. What? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, am I? Does anyone know? Sounds right. Uh, What are you talking about? Molossia, which is an independent, quote unquote, nation consisting of six acres in Nevada. (laughs) (laughs) So this guy founded this nation of Molossia. It's clearly a joke, but uh, for a laugh, go look up Molossia online. Uh, the head of state, His Excellency President Kevin Baugh, <laughs> appears in several pictures in typical Tin Puck di- dictator garb, complete with a military hat, sunglasses, sash, and a chest full of medals. <laughs> yep, there he is. I see him. He is the Mayor yeah. McCheese of the High Nevada Desert. Yeah. I love it. And there's no relationship between Melosia and the Deseret Alphabet, exi- aside from the fact that they're both made up. Yeah. Uh, President ba- Bao just wanted... Uh, this is a perfect example of why English is a shit language. Is it Bao? Bao? Ba? I don't know. Uh, just wanted his signage to look a bit more foreign. So I love it. And, and basically, alphabet. it is a nation of, of tough sheds, by the looks of it, <laughs> done up as rock shops and places to buy fudge. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, and I figure, you know, uh, Joseph made up a whole book of history. Yeah. So yeah. Brigham felt like he needed to make up his own alphabet. So he did. There you go. And so uh, the died des- with the, him. The Deseret Alphabet died as it lived, being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Uncle Doug. Let's uh, move on. Moving on. Uncle Doug. Hello. As always, hmm. you're headed south. Yeah, and you're headed south, and you you run to the platform, but you miss that train. You know what I mean? You yeah. miss that midnight train to Georgia. You know why? Again and again. I had why? something on my mind. You had something else <laughs> on your mind. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to get you there. I don't know well, how to get you where you're well, going, fellas. I let me just step in here because if Dan, you're lucky, uh, D- Uncle Dan, is that you? Yes, it is. Yes, it, hi, it, it's me, everybody. What's Uncle the solution Dan. to our problem? Yes, indeed. You need to get to Georgia, and let's just say that you need to get to the most bullshit part of Georgia next to literally nothing. Point of order. Yes. That's the entire yeah. state of Georgia. No. Take I, that, Georgian listeners. I said the most bullshit part. Oh. We're talking pointless, completely pointless piece of ground. <laughs> Home of no illusions. That's right. Valdosta, Georgia. Ju- 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 nope. Nope. Jump onto Highway 77. Tootle into Elbert County, and there, off the side of the road, in the middle of a cow pasture atop a hill, you may see... The state capital. Georgia Uh, Governor Nathan Deal. (laughs) (laughs) Well, here's what... Let me tell you something. Yeah. In our Earth's 600 years of history... Or 6,000 years of history, Uh that is. Yeah. You, that Look, was very young Earth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Yes. I I like to go strong. I like to go yeah. hard. What can I say? Yep. Uh, mankind has been tantalized by many a mind-boggling mystery. Hmm. The uh, you yeah. know the the great pyramids of Egypt, Mexico, and Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> yeah. The Bermuda Triangle. Nicholas Cage's career. All of these things. <laughs> but to that rarefied list. May we, may we now add what is quite possibly the most important mystery of them all. Mm. America's Stonehenge itself, the Georgia Guidestones. Ooh. <laughs> I ran out of breath. Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> it's, you're the only person who plays a mouth theremin, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm, much like my swimming, my... my <laughs> My theremin is a sprint, <laughs> not a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, you you may ask yourself, w- w- what are these guide stones of which I speak? And I didn't even know about these things until a couple of weeks ago. I was doing a thing on Thank God I'm Atheist, and I was listening to um, Mark Taylor, who is the uh, fireman prophet. Have mm. you heard of this mm. guy? No. no. Fireman prophet? He was a fireman in... Texas, I think, somewhere in the south, some worthless mm-hmm. part of this country again. Oh, God. <laughs> we're going to get in so much trouble. Yes, are, go we on. Are, we are. Sorry about it, guys. Yeah. Uh, we're only playing mostly. Uh, I, I, got, I got so much shit for, for our, con- our, our, our attacks on Kentucky, yeah. and deservedly so. Yes, last indeed. Week, you, you, the, the, you were, you were so. a little rough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywho, the, this guy, there's even a movie about him. God awful movies did a takedown of it a few a ways back. But this guy is is a conspiracy nut. He's one of the proponents of the you know the sort of 
idea that there's a new world order and that Hillary Clinton and, and Barack Obama are all part of a a child molestation ring that's and, run by George Soros. Right, and Jews. There and the Jews. There, and yeah. oh, the we're, Jews. We're getting there. Don't worry, <laughs> they'll come. <clears throat> but these, uh, he's one of these guys, but he also, I mean, his his origin story is that he was a firefighter and he started having dreams and realized, oh shit, I'm a fucking prophet. These are dreams sure. that God has given me and now yeah. I know the future. And never yeah. mind the fact that most of his prophecies, if he bothers to get specific at all, as with all prophets, psychics, mediums, various and sundry, they don't come true. But then he right. has reasons why, you know, they actually did come true, but then it was covered over by the Illuminati or whatever. Uh-huh. Anyway, right. he at one point is spouting off on some random bunch of bullshit and mentions the Georgia Guidestones. And I'm like, the what, the what stones? Oh, what could that possibly be? Well, let me tell you what it is, yeah. fellas. 20 feet tall, giant monolithic blocks of granite. It is. It, imagine, if you will, <laughs> four foot wide, 19 foot tall, four of these pillars. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, probably eight inches thick. Just really huge blocks of granite. Onto which, yeah. uh, which are sort of arranged in a sort of pinwheel, they're they're all sort of uh, perpendicular to each other and facing inward. And then there's a, a, a center column, and then a uh, a capstone that touches all of them. And this yeah. thing, this thing is set up, as I said, in a cow pasture in Georgia, uh, near literally nothing. Uh, right. It is ninety miles away from Atlanta something like 40 miles away from Athens. That's the closest, like, real city. They're in El- Elbert County. And yeah. Yeah. People come from miles around to see it, mostly because if anybody sees it, they came from miles around. <laughs> uh, there's nothing even close. <laughs> anyway, what you have on this thing, it's it's inscribed in, uh, what is it, eight languages with uh, All right. ten not commandments, but ten rules, ten a vision for Earth and the future. Okay, and I will read them to you. But uh, and you should know that it's inscribed in English. <laughs> I fucking love. <laughs> At some point, somebody chose all of the things that I'm about to tell you. People talked. Okay. Probably multiple people. We don't know for sure. Talked to each other, and they specifically and uh, on purpose chose everything that you're about to hear. Okay. Just keep that in mind. I'm, so I'm ready. They're in, Eng- in English, Spanish, Swahili, he- Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. All right. On different faces of these okay. four stones. So you've got two faces on each stone. Right. So you got you. there's your eight. Basically, yeah. uh, here, here we go. <laughs> and you guys stop me if you hear anything that you think might be a little bit wonky. I I think you'll I think we'll sail stop. through this. Okay. Right. Okay. Correct. Do Russian. Uh, <laughs> uh number one. Maintain humanity under five hundred million in perpetual balance with nature. Um no what? problems there. I've got okay, bad news. we have blown past that, but that's fine. <laughs> pretty easy. Pretty obviously, we all agree with that one. Okay, uh, don't worry. Well, nope. the three of us listen. The three of us are doing our part for that. So <laughs> right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Not contributed at all. Unkling rather than fathering uh, is at least. Yeah, we're at least trying our best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, and these are not numbered. They're just sort of listed. Here we go. Stacked. Uh, Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Okay, so that's eugenics. That's creepy. As these fuck. sound like they were. These were written in one of those other eight languages and translated into English. <laughs> it sounds like that. <laughs> Probably not, but it sounds like that. Here we go. Three. Unite humanity with a living new language. Hmm. Sound like anything? Maybe a Deseret language. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, number four, rule, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. I actually kind of like that one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not bad. Uh, that's a, a little Vulcan. Crazy. 
a little a little on the Vulcan side, but uh, but good. I'm I'm at least crazy so far. I'm down with it. Uh, number five: protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Okay. Okay. It doesn't sound Don't poetic. It sounds reasonable and obvious, right. like painfully, stupidly obvious. Right. It's kind of zodiac <laughs> level piffle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Here we go. Uh, let all nations rule internally. Resolving external disputes in a world court. Now, if you okay. know conspiracy theories, uh, you know that that is the that, that, that says, is the Jewiest thing you could say. That well, set up that, some alarm bells. That showed up on the Richter scale. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, avoid petty yeah. laws and useless officials. Well, wouldn't we all like that? Uh, a bit, bit general, but sure. Yeah, exactly. And who gets to decide? Well, that's a question. Then balance personal rights with social duties. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay, that's good. Uh, prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. So now we're getting fucking hippy dippy. Mm -hmm. And finally, number now 10. We're the good stuff. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Fucking hippy. Yeah. So does, it, does it say it twice? It does say it twice. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, did they run out of room for a third time? Yeah, they did. No, they, there was actually plenty of room. So <laughs> there you go. So uh, these sound, I mean, they're kind of fortune cookie type pearls of wisdom. Okay. They, yeah. Some of them are. I, I some Googled of them it. Are, uh huh. I Googled it and, and I, I agree. It's kind of fortune cookie wisdom. <laughs> if Moses had had the physical fortitude to carry these down the hill, <laughs> yeah. they are. I'm looking at dimensions. They're 16 feet, 4 inches tall, 1.7 no, feet thick, uh, and 6.5 and feet wide. So, anyway, had Moses been able to lug these down the hill, ah, I think we'd be in better shape. They're kind of not so shitty as well, the 10. They are, yeah, well, they, they're... I mean, at least four of them aren't wasted on uh, the God thing. But yeah, we've got eugenics in there. That's a bit of a problem. We've got it is a, a problematic bit, well, thing. The, no, I mean that's that's a fair point. Yeah. These are these are better than the Ten Commandments, but so are the rules to shoots and ladders. <laughs> like, I mean, it's a low fucking bar. <laughs> well, I mean, at least the Ten Commandments had stuff that we can all mostly agree on. You know, yeah. don't, don't don't kill, don't steal. Those things are pretty easy. Same with shoots and ladders. But I don't know that we can all agree on unite humanity with a living new language. You know what I mean? Like, or or like, the, yeah. can we all agree on uh, five hundred million being our max out point? Like, so, wait, wait, when we're was, at, were these were, we're these, at close to eight billion? Right? Yeah. Were these put in place when there were only yeah. five hundred million people? 1970s, my friends. No. This is uh, this is something that showed up. Uh, we do have so we have a story behind it. Um, well, this is, so it was erected, okay, I, I guess, me. in the eighties, in nineteen eighty itself, um, and the story is very interesting. And boy, it just feeds into the the conspiracy nuts uh, mindset so perfectly. Boy, in you will get kicked off of this show if you do that ever again. Uh, in nineteen seventy nine, a man using using the pseudonym. Robert C. Christian uh, uh, came uh -huh. into the Elberton Granite Finishing Company. And are you okay? I am. Okay. Doug, Doug has spilled yeah. some water. I had a little spill, but we're good. Okay. Uh, he, got, he got excited. When you say granite finishing, yeah. he, he <laughs> tends to have a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, apparently the one thing that that area actually has is a lot of granite. And so they, so apparently they went... Not to a place that could bring granite to them, but they just went to the granite and said, hey, do you mind? Uh, I, I represent a group of people, he, this guy says, who want to create this monument. Money is no object. What do you say? <laughs> and the guy thought that they were nutball, that he was a nutball, so he, he said some outrageous figure to which the man agreed, oh. and they got it all set up. Uh, this... N and nobody still to this day knows who the fuck this this guy was, or if he was re representing a group, or if it was just his like fever dream ramblings being put into uh, etched into marble. What year did Brewster's Millions come out? Right, 
Brewster's Millions. Jesus. <laughs> the toy. <That> was, <laughs> no, remember the plot was you had to spend money needlessly. Right. Yes, that's right. Oh, oh that's I, funny. Yeah. Yeah, he had to spend all of the millions. Well, this have. this looks like a good project to spend needlessly on. Right. So, uh, so the guy did it. They 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 built the damn thing uh, <laughs> on this weird plot of land that has you know, and it is surrounded by cow pasture. That's not uh, that's not me lying. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, and and there it is. And now it's just left to the ages. Uh, so far. Nobody has claimed responsibility for it, but lots of people have claimed to really know the true uh, story. What does so, Alex Jones have to say about it? Right? I'll, I, I'll bet you he's talked about it. I didn't find an it's Alex Jones. It's making our monuments gay. <laughs> <laughs> the cows around it. They're going to be gay. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, there is apparently a time capsule buried underneath it that is to be opened. There are explicit instructions that there is a time capsule buried beneath it, and that time capsule is to be opened on, and then it's blank. <laughs> so it, 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 they, okay. they, they is that forgot. like the castle? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that That's our new Patreon goal. That clearly is <laughs> your uncles are supposed to go dig up the time capsule. Yeah, so. exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, it, sa- it says place six feet below this spot on blank to be opened on blank. Uh, it's the direct to, 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 to cable uh, national treasure sequel. Right. Yeah, exactly. It is, um, yeah, it is poor Nicolas Cage's next film is just slowly pickaxing his way underneath <laughs> the Georgia Guidestones. Yeah. So uh, um, this this giant thing. So here's where people are going with this thing, you know, yeah. because because you can read about just sort of what it is, but it's not. It doesn't really sing until you read about what it means to people mm. to the, to the crazies. Um, there's nothing more tantalizing to to them than an origins than a mystery and so yes it's tied into obviously the new world order right uh because it's got this whole uh it because it mentions a world court yeah and a world language and a world and a new world language and you know what's funny as i researched this and as i researched the uh the conspiracy theories because you know you do something like this and you you start tumbling down rabbit holes left and right uh, is that the conspiracy theorists just have a different fucking outlook on everything. And so like one of the, so in the same category under the uh, umbrella of these are the people who are trying to destroy the world mm. for the rest of us. And especially to destroy Christianity, you got the right. new world order, you got the Illuminati, you got the, the UN we'll talk a bit about the Rosicrucians, um, yes, which we, which we should which we should get on. Uh, we should do a whole segment on at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Planned Parenthood is involved, of course, oh, yeah. because we've got the eugenics and whatever. The Freemasons, the UN, uh, and environmentalists. Right. So when so for some reason, when they hear someone saying "protect the earth," what they hear is destroy right. Christianity, right, and destroy our way of life, and also somehow you know the, it's only the Jews that want this, so. <laughs> And they're bad. Then I guess I guess what they're tacitly admitting is that Christianity wants to destroy the earth, right? It seems that way, or rather that yeah. uh, I mean, now so one of the things that I have heard is that Christians who believe in this shit believe that there's no way we could destroy the earth because uh, God has ordained it for our use, and yeah. so you can't destroy it, you can't do anything to it, nothing bad can happen. God yes. gave it to us. So yeah. you know, pump, roll coal as hard roll as you want. Roll coal, because nothing bad can happen. Uh, why? There, did, why did he give us coal? Right? If he didn't want us <laughs> yeah, to use exactly. it. Um, if he are, gave us coal, why are there still monkeys? There's also <laughs> <laughs> there's also some interesting uh, hippy dippy shit associated with these stones, including some astronomical stuff. Uh, uh, I was that, gonna ask. There's a channel through the center stone. That yeah. indicates the celestial pole. There is a mm. horizontal slot that that indicates the annual travel of the sun. Uh, so a sunbeam through the capstone marks noon uh, throughout the year. Huh. Mm-hmm. And apparently, there's a hole that's drilled through that, like at nighttime. If you look through the hole, you'll you'll it's theoretically always pointed at the 
the North Star. Hmm. I'm not sure if that's a real possibility. Uh, but it doesn't seem right. I don't I, think I, the North Star is in geosynchronous orbit. No, no, it, it is. But it's uh, not, not in orbit. But, it's, but it stays a it, constant. It's about ten light years, pretty much directly above the North Pole. Right. Exactly. So that's mm. why it actually stays fairly constant in mm-hmm. the northern hemisphere sky. Right. Uh, you're Nerd. welcome. Yeah. Nerds. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But it does travel through, like, we still spin, so I guess, uh, well, I guess it doesn't really, no, I don't know, maybe but it's it not, works. But let's be clear, this is not like some miraculous, it's not like the Druids built this thing with all of their knowledge. Well, no, but like, we we now have a lot more astronomical right. uh, knowledge, so this kind of shit's... Yeah, there's got, the North you, Star, you I'm going to drill a hole right there, you gotta, we're good. You got to do the calculations, but, yeah. but then, you know, you can do it. Yeah. And they did. They bothered to do all of this stuff. So, but you so know you, what, Dan? You were you were saying that uh, you know this thing is clearly mostly defined by the people who whom it drives mad. Yes. And if you Google the Georgia Guidestones, many of the pictures you will see are of a lot of vandalism to this thing. That's true. Uh, yeah, it has, that, it has been defaced many times. Well, that's how you stick it to the Illuminati. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the other thing is that. There are people who go to this thing. It has attracted a whole group, a whole lot of people who are there because they think it's brilliant. So mm. there's a whole. There are hippy dippies. There are you know Wiccans that go to it. There are all of these people that do you know various uh, rituals around it. Ugh. Basically, it's catnip for anybody who has crazy like <laughs> magical thinking. It is. You know it's what? Set up it, so well. It's bringing people together. And I this, mentioned this I, isn't. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. I mentioned the Rosicrucians, and there's a reason that I mentioned them, uh, because you'll recall that I said that the the name of the guy who who commissioned this thing, he called himself Robert C. Christian or R. C. <laughs> Christian. Which oh lordy, Christian R. C. is the name of the guy who theoretically founded the Rosicrucians. There is so like all of this. It's. Ba- I want to to make a conspiracy. I want to make a thing like this as a practical joke against these guys, because this was done so beautifully. And now they talk about you know, they like I said, Mark Taylor, who introduced me to this idea, was talking about it as though this is the these this this is the guidepost for how the new world order wants to go about uh, getting you know creating. The universe, the, this world Which, for the look, future. This is typical of huge, totally underground, hydra level conspiracies. Right. That what they do is they leave their instruction manual in 16 high, 16 foot high slabs of granite right. next to a highway in Georgia. Like that's, that, that's just how it's done. Yeah. That's how secrets are kept. In Espanol. By the way, I don't know where you got 16 feet, but I've got 19 feet, 3 inches total tall, total Whoa. height. Well, clearly there's some disagreement about this, Dan. There is. There is. Yeah. So uh, so you, you, uh, listeners, you will have to go to Georgia and measure them yourselves. Is it metric versus imperial? Because that's, that's another. <laughs> right. That's right. It's, it's, it's in it, nautical miles. <laughs> is it Jew inches versus Christ inches? <laughs> And there's literally oh. a picture. There's literally a picture online of the crane, and a bunch Ooh. of guys with ladders putting the fucking capstone on the thing. It's not yep. like, it's not like a you know a crop circle. You can see the guys actually doing. Yeah, it, so. I mean, this did not appear in some mysterious way, but still, pe- nobody knows what it is. Nobody knows why it is, and uh, and it's being used for for only good and never evil all throughout the land. Yeah. Well, so there you I have think- it. It is the. I think uh, we found something else to worship. It's the guide stones. Uh, let them guide your life. See what happens. <laughs> Who knows? Kill, kill nine tenths of the of, of the you of the world population and see what happens. It'll be perfect. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All right, let's move on. Gentlemen, hello. What? what? I, I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we put this show of ours out into the ether. And we, we don't charge money for it. It's free. Nope, not a dime. But, but sometimes people are like, hey, you know what? I've been enjoying this for a minute. I think I'm going to give them some of my hard-earned cash no. 
Uh, and then and then they do so. Uh, so we have some folks, some beautiful people to thank. They are yes. our favorite of all of the people, the best people. Uh, and so, so let's dive into that. Uh, we got to thank Catherine. Uh, we got to thank. Vote for the biggest D you can find. Yep, it's Doug, good friend of ours. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, we got a. We, oh, uh, Uncle Doug. Oh, I'm going to make you do a saint. Oh shit! For for our friend Devin. Devin, okay. Uh, Devin, your saint is uh, Saint Vlad of his namesake, Vladivostok. Mm. Okay. Um, he is the patron saint of uh, vitamin deficiencies, poorly written LinkedIn bios, <laughs> and uh, salted herring. Oh, yummy. Yummy, wow. yummy. Mm. That, boy, everybody loves all of the th- those things. Yeah. Uh, so great. Congratulations, Devin. That's, a, that's an amazing treat yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We also need to thank I have fiat local t- ah, fuck I fucked it up. I was I was gonna do it right. I have fiat la Jokutle, the Icelandic volcano. Oh. Oh. Who, uh, who is now donating to us. Thank you very much. Not, not our first volcanic uh, volcanic patron, I have to say. No, no, we we got a few uh, very uh, various and sundry seismic yeah, givers. A bit of a volcanic panic. And not and not our last. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it was, it, uh, we uh, we always appreciate when geologic uh, events can can donate phenomena. To the show. Um, thanks so much to John and Uncle Mark. I'm going to give you the job of giving a saint to a good friend, Rod. Oh well, this is a very exciting. A, a, a dear old friend, Rod, that uh, finally fucking stepped up, if I may say so. So, he's, who's been enjoying the show for <laughs> for quite a long time. Uh, uh, Spending all his money on beard oil. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, what's very obvious is Rod's patron saint is Saint Jerry of Flat Point, who is the the patron saint of hot fruit, <laughs> uh, uh, the pole and the hole, <laughs> glint, <laughs> and most infam- uh-huh. infamously the Liberty Bell. So, congratulations, Rod. That's uh, it's, Rod. it's high time wow. you got that kind of love and protection from on high. Indeed. Uh, and if you'd like the gentle listener to uh, pray to your own personal saint or get a heaven for yourself for the, your afterlife or just to show your uncles that you appreciate what we do, you are welcome to go to our website, howtoheretic.com, and click on the Patreon button. And oh, actually, take you to actually the it's the, the support us button. Uh, we've been mis- we've been uh, misnaming it. It's the support us button, not the Patreon button. God damn it, Mark! I don't give a fuck what the button is. It's, but that's why we've been eating baked beans this entire time. Are we going to okay. do this on the well, fucking I air want right some now? Bacon. Is this happening right now? <laughs> Are we going to argue? Like, we talked about this in the meeting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm fine. Anywho, yeah. Click, find find any you know what go to our webpage and just click anything yeah. and then start throwing money at it <laughs> whatever it is th- throw your cash at the screen hopefully we'll get it throw uh, your deseret ducats right at the screen that's right yeah. uh and uh, <laughs> thanks so much to everybody uh please please do so if you can't do that go ahead and give us five stars on your various and sundry places a galaxy and, of stars uh, with that, a galaxy of stars to illuminate the dark night of your uncle's soul yeah, something along those lines. Let's move on. Uncle Mark. Uh, hello. I need life lessons. If there's one thing that I need, uh, yeah. I need, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a good, I'm not a visual learner. I need, I need to be told. Right. Well, we've talked about certain things in your life, like when it's appropriate to open your pants in public. I think we got through that one. <laughs> so wait, um, and and the answer was not always because yeah. Well, re- uh, the judge was help. The judge was very helpful. The answer is always in, that, in the elevator. Right. Yeah. Oh, of course, always in the elevator. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, never on the escalator because if you trip, well, <laughs> Woof. I don't care to say what's going to happen. Once that's, bitten, twice shy. That's called a second yeah. scision right there. And <laughs> that's right. So we don't need that. So let's move. Let's let. Me, but maybe Uncle Doug, do you do you have a, do you have a good a good story to tell? A I, yarn to spin? I, I thought that once again we could dive into the source fountain of Christianity. For, you mean, do you mean yeah. all of society's moral? Uh, that's right. M- morality. Yeah. Where all our morals come from. That's right. All our laws. 
Uh, this segment we we originally named Para Bullshit, but which you cleverly renamed The Terrible Parables. Yes, indeed. So remember, as we dive into this segment, that, that according to the Gospels and all of Christianity, this is the pure, uncut doctrine of the Son of God himself, the Yahweh yeah. that goes all the way, the Shaddai yeah. of shade, the Jehovah, the Jehovah before oh, he knows you, Jesus Horatio <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're done. That's it. Good. Um, that was, that was, yeah. You you literally just chose this so that you could have done, so you could ramble that. And off. I can't do it again because I can't just repeat material. So no, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, Thank so God I that quit. one's that one's spent. So uh, this parable we're going to talk about today only appears in two of the four Gospels, Matthew and Luke. And as is my way, a quick side note that none of these parables appear in John, and that Luke predates Matthew. So we're going to read them chronologically. That means. Luke first, then Matthew. Like, and, and, okay. Um, so, uh, for those following at home. <laughs> yes, right. exactly. The parable for today yeah. is the parable of the lost sheep, a.k.a. the parable of the good shepherd. Okay. This is yes. an extremely popular parable because, yes. among other things, it is short. <laughs> um, and by my, <laughs> my ironclad rule of scripture, shorter is empirically better. Yes, indeed. Yes. So also, And it, who doesn't love stories about sheep? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Also, it is one of the most iconic image. It has one of the most iconic images in the Gospels outside of the crucifixion. That is, of course, Jesus carrying a little sheep, either in his arms yeah. or over his shoulder or over his neck. Yeah. Um, what they don't ever show is that right out of frame, there is a stew pot. Exactly. <laughs> uh, also, it is one of the most important references to shepherding in the New Testament. And I'll know that mm. although shepherding and shepherd activities mm. um, are very important to Christians. It doesn't really pop up that often in the New Testament. Uh, in the Old Testament, it's mo- mostly in reference to actual shepherds. Yeah. Um, and it's only mentioned a few times as an a- allegorical theme, and this is one of them. So mm. today we're going to be reading from the new, te- the new international version of the Bible. <laughs> the NIT. Yes. The NIT. Uh, this parable is apparently part of a trilogy of parables regarding redemption, the trilogy also includes the parable of the lost coin and the parable of the prodigal son. Okay. Uh, one problem, the other two parables in this important meditation on redemption and forgiveness that God himself spoke about for all of us to learn from only appear in Luke. Right. So that seems to water down the importance of all of this. No, it magnifies it. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, it's not long, so let's dive in. This is uh, Luke fifteen four through 6. Okay. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99? <laughs> correct. Correct. <laughs> Ding. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Fuck. I was late on the buzzer. <laughs> uh, doesn't he leave the 99 in uh, the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. Bonk, that's and me. I left the other 99 yeah. to be stolen. Yeah. Now I've lost 14 yeah. more. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's it. So let's, let's bounce to Matthew 18, 11 through 13. That's the whole thing? That's it. That's uh, the whole thing. Okay, good. Again, great. Yeah. More of this. Yeah, exactly. Um, Matthew yeah, 18. But shorter uh, Bible is better Bible. All I'm saying is that enough hay has been made out of this fucking parable. Right. That, like, that does not seem like a sufficient quantity of bullshit to even make any hay out of it. Exactly. I do. Bl- I, I think the message is awful and it's very distilled. So we'll get to that. Let's, okay. Let's do Matthew 18, 11 through 13. Please so. do. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 and, uh, on the hills and go look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. And. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, wait. Which Star Trek was it? Oh, it, it, don't you step on my fucking punchline. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. All, will, I, all I was, I all I'm going to say. you up one side. All I'm going to say is at some point we're going to see Ray Comfort hold up a sheep and go, behold, the atheist nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as, as Uncle Mark tried to steal my material. Uh-huh. And no, as, no. As Captain Spock, himself, Captain Spock himself said, while dying in the, dil- the dilithium chamber of the Enterprise as the Genesis planet was being formed from the b- dust of the Matara Nebula and the wreckage of the Reliant, including the remains of Khan Noonien Singh himself, he said the immortal words, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Right. I do not 
take that back. I stand by that paragraph, <laughs> and I didn't even have to Google a goddamn thing. I believe you 100%, uh, and I, I won't say that it's sad, because I know a bunch of our listeners are like, we're, we're nodding in, in pleasant agreement <laughs> the entire time. Doug loves the Star Treks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a shepherd. And I know that will come as a shock to many of our listeners, <laughs> <laughs> but this uh, this seems odd to me. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like the a, if I leave the my ninety nine helpless stupid sheep right to go looking for a lost one, can't a pack of predators do a lot more damage in my absence than the possibility of losing that one sheep? Not only that, but like okay, in your own story, sheep are apparently prone to wander. Yeah, so. If you go and get... Now, again, yes, we're not shepherds. We don't know. But it does seem like you leave the whole thing and go and find the other one. You're just begging to lose more sheep. Right. No matter how it plays out, you're just begging for that. Uh, of course. And there, I, no, nobody that knows anything about money or things would ever think that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> right? You have a, you, you have a, a, a haystack of $100 bills, but you drop a nickel down a fucking storm drain. <laughs> so, and you're like, ah! Find a way to get down the storm drain to get the nickels. And then when you get back and the haystack is gone, or, good job. Yeah. Or, or when you get back and the haystack is still there, you love that nickel the most. Right. And that, that in right. the Matthew version where he says he is happier about that one sheep than the other 99, that seems immoral to me yeah i mean it's yes. one of the, so like okay what we've done is we've we've shredded in our view in our non-shepherd view the literal idea of yeah. the story so let's dig into the parable idea of the story right what are we supposed to mean by this because i can't <laughs> think of a way i know how i've heard preachers twist it yeah but it still doesn't make sense to me well and it's i i guess it's the value of a single soul right that's which, is okay, but why does the other ninety nine? What? Why are they diminished in value? Right. I mean, so See, this is when we. This talk- is James Tiberius Kirk saying that the needs of the one <laughs> outweigh the needs of, of the many. No, truly. Yeah. Which is supposed to be. Uh, which is also supposed to have kind of the same moral value, or or at least right, or that, or an emotional value, if not an objectively moral one, right. or something. But like, right. theoretically. God should be above the emotional value. Yeah. God should... So, like, to say... Oh, that... Look. Okay. We're saying lost sheep here. I'm going to I'm gonna say that the metaphor is someone strays from belief in God or strays from the church or yeah. something. Then that's when they right. come yeah. back, when you get them again, that's all the sweeter because uh, you lost them and then, and then you have them again. Right. But fuck you. Fuck there are all you. these people who are working very hard to stay in it, yep. who, are, who are toeing the line, and, then, and, and they mean nothing? They mean less to you than that one person? It's, it's the same twisted morality of the prodigal son, which we'll talk about another time, but that he's happier about his son who came back from disbelief than he is about his son who stayed. Right. And that's what this is. Like, right. well, what incentive do I have to stay? Right. And, and uh, I should go and have my rum springer. Right. And when I come back, you're going to be happier about that. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't, you know, and I guess, you know, obviously we're not supposed to take this literally, right? Well, it's a, it's a metaphor. We're not supposed to, yeah, and worry about losing sheep. To you imaginary Christian apologists, I suggest you reach out to Ken Ham in 2005 <laughs> and talk him out of the Ark Encounter. Right. You know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I don't get it. And it's such an iconic image of Jesus carrying this one sheep, but he's left the fucking flock uh, yeah. Uh, vulnerable. Yeah. And, well, but, it, but it's, it's about what matters is the, the uh, adhering to and the enforcement of orthodoxy, right? Yeah. It's that the, if somebody ever strays outside the tribe, any effort to get them back is is worth it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what sacrifice you make to get them back. Yeah, better to... Um, to and if you sacrifice the entire, uh, the, the health and safety or whatever and welfare of the entire flock, what's most important is to never let anybody stray from belief. Yeah, I suppose. Well, and, and it's, yeah, it's the... I don't know. It's so weird to me. And the whole the whole sheep shepherd thing, which gets hit so often in the, in the New Testament... Mm-hmm. It's really it's, bothers it's me. It's really sexy. It's really sexy. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, it's like this thing of like, 
Does does anybody want to point out that you're comparing yourselves to sheep? Right. Who need a shepherd? Right. There's no autonomy. There's no sense of like, you know, there, it's always it's always you are sheep or you are the children of God. There's all of this language that infantilizes and uh, diminishes the abilities and 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 thinking and uh, and processing. Yeah. Of the individual person, well, it is. It but is, the entire the the entire enterprise is to snuff out individuality, right? right? Like yeah. Christ is a fisher of men, and so uh, the the shepherd thing is just part and parcel of that. You can't you can't have uh, you know a, an intense religious orthodoxy with a lot of free thinkers. Well, and isn't it funny that at, you know in point of view is so important? I read this. And thought it was, you know, when I was young and religious, I'm like, wow, that's amazing that <laughs> God would, you know, find me in the darkness and all this stuff. And now I read it and it's like, this is morally problematic. Yeah. This is, there's, n- this is bad. Yeah. The, how do you not see that this is a terrible thing to be teaching people, you know? Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, the Lord, once again. Pearls of wisdom. Okay, just giving us the, the straight dope. Back yeah. to the show. <laughs> Oh, oh, let's move on. We made it so we, we were so close <laughs> to making it out without that, but now let's move on before it happens again. Well, friends, that's it for this week's show. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email, howto at howto heretic dark carm, or if you have a new sort of sheep math. You can tell us about it on voicemail at 903-88-HOW-2, which is 903-884-6986. You can also find me on Twitter, at HowToHeretic. Yeah, do it in the uh, Deseret Alphabet. Anyway, thanks so much to our patrons. And thanks to Cody Layton for editing the show. And thank you, dear friends, for tuning in. Bye, friends. Couldn't do it without chat.